In part two of my driveline upgrade series videos, I'm gonna start by showing you the disassembly of my 12 bolt rear end. I'm gonna do it in a time-lapse fashion with specific steps along the way. Certainly, if you wanna know more specifics, I highly recommend you pick up the book that I showed you in the previous video. Also, Yukon Gear has a ton of good information online. So let's get into the time-lapse. The second part of this video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to slow it down and take a look at the specifics of setting up a ring and pinion and differential in your 12 bolt car or truck rear end. Now obviously this is a truck rear end. There's some slight differences with some of the bearing preloads with the car, but for the most part it's about the same. When you set up a ring and pinion, you actually need to get two sets of bearings. And the reason for that is so these are the bearings. So you've got a large one and you've got a small one and they go in different areas. But the reason you need to get two is this larger bearing especially, this is a press fit. See how it goes on and stops? So before you're done, or, or I guess when your setup is correct, you would generally shim this area right here and and that would set the height of this bearing and, and, and ultimately you would adjust your pinion clearance, okay? So, however, during setup, you don't wanna be, or at least I don't, you don't wanna be pressing this on and off. Um, I've got a hydraulic press, you need a special tool to remove it as I found out the hard way when I broke mine last time, trying to remove one of these. So, what you do is, you get an extra set of bearings, the exact same style, you take your grinder, and you grind the inside out just enough so this slides over the top. Now again, these are not gonna be what you use for the final uh, assembly. You're just using them to get your clearances. So I checked, these are the same part numbers as the final bearings that I'll use that came in the kit. Um, but by opening this up and allowing it to slide over, if I wanna change shims, I can simply just pull the pinion out take these on and off and it's easy. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we did it. They're opened up. They don't have to be pretty. Um, it's probably not a bad idea to mark these, although you know, you'd know you catch this before bolt up, but here's what we're going for. So here's the new pinion. That's just uh, styrofoam. Okay, so we got a new pinion. Now, when I want to shim it, so when I want to slide a shim down over here, I can do that. And I can take my large bearing, it's no longer press fit. Boom, fits nice and snug. Same thing, when I want to put this in, draw it up, take this one, take this one, boom, goes on there like that. It's gonna fit good, but for disassembly's sake, it makes it easy. Um, go ahead and 
Mark these with the world's crappiest Sharpie. So what I'm doing right here is I'm going through and I'm cleaning the ring gear. It's very important that you ensure that everything's clean so you get accurate measurements and you don't have any issues with contaminating the oil. The other thing you're going to see me do here when I'm not blocking the camera with the brake clean is I'm filing the edges of the ring gear. That's to ensure that there's no burrs and that it sits flat on the carrier. That's something the manufacturer recommends and doesn't take long to do. What I initially planned to show you here was a very trick tool that I was going to make that would allow me to get the exact correct pinion depth measurement as indicated on the face of the pinion. Unfortunately, what I realized was despite this being a fun idea and something that some folks online even say that you can do, it simply does not work. The correct way to get your pinion depth is really to use the gear marking compound and to do a guess and check by reading the markings. Before installing the carrier, you need to install your new ring gear. This is where I get to use my brand new hydraulic press to install the carrier bearings on each side of the carrier itself. Now, the carrier and the ring gear are a bit of an interference fit, so you can either place the ring gear into some warm water to cause it to expand or slowly draw it up easily like I did using an impact wrench. Before finally installing it, you'll need to use a torque wrench to ensure that the ring gear bolts are torqued to the correct spec. At this point, you're ready to go in ahead and install your ring and pinion for the first time. I highly recommend using the carrier bearing shim combination that you removed from your original differential. You'll want to paint the ring gear in multiple locations, actually more so than I did in this first video. And then you're going to want to turn it over while applying pressure to the ring gear to develop a wear pattern. You want to go back and forth to make sure you get markings on both the coast and the drive side. Unfortunately, this is an iterative process and I removed the ring and pinion to clear off the paint, reshim the pinion and try to get the correct wear pattern because I was unsuccessful the first time. You're going to want to plan ahead for this. It's going to take multiple times and every time you adjust the pinion shim depth, you will have to recheck the backlash because it will have changed as well. There are two issues with my first attempt at understanding the wear pattern. First, I did not apply the gear marking compound to enough locations on the ring gear. Second, my pinion depth was incorrect. This can be indicated by the sharp cutoff line at the base of the gear as indicated by the marking compound. Ideally, the marks should be centered from the base to the top of the gear. As you guys can see, the first attempt didn't go flawlessly. Uh, there were issues, which knowing what I know now is to be expected. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to point out. Earlier in the video, I mentioned to go ahead and use the original carrier shims that came out of your old setup, your old differential. Um, that's fine as a starting point, but just make sure that you need to check and make sure that your backlash is within spec before you go ahead and check any wear patterns. So the first time I installed it, my using the original carrier shims, my backlash was 3000. So I actually had to modify that in order to get it within spec. Then of course I checked my wear pattern. My wear pattern was incorrect, which told me I had to pull everything back out and redo my pinion shim. When you redo your pinion shim, you're, you're changing that distance. What that also does is it affects your backlash as well. So I reinstalled everything as I had taken it out. I checked my backlash and it jumped from three thousandths to twelve thousandths. Again, that's out of spec. You're shooting for six to 10 thousandths. So you wanna make sure you go ahead and adjust that every time whether that's the first time you put it in or whether um, it's after you adjust your pinion depth, you wanna make sure that that's 8,000. So I finally got that set up to 8,000. Then I went ahead and I ran my pattern um, and take a look at it, let me know what you think. I think it's an acceptable pattern. I'm sure I could have went and played with it more and got it dead on, but as you will see, if you do this yourself, it's not the easiest to read. There's a lot of different factors that go into play trying to put additional force on your ring. Uh, ring gear would obviously help, uh, but when you're by yourself, you just gotta you know, press on it as hard as you can, turn it over and try and get a good pattern. So that's what I did. Um, I'm happy with it. So uh, that's about all I have for this video right here. I wanted to try and keep it rather short. Uh, there will be a part three of this. Uh, due to the coronavirus and, and my work schedule, I wasn't able to get everything buttoned up to where I have a drive shaft, but I have everything 
up to having a custom drive shaft sitting here to install it. So depending on how long it takes for me to get that custom drive shaft from the shop, um, I may post the last video or I may wait until I have the drive shaft and then do that all at once. But everything with the exception of the drive shaft is complete. In the next video, I'll talk more about pinion bearing preload, which is actually, in my opinion, the most difficult thing to set. So we'll talk about that more in the next video. I'll also go into detail on some of the upgrades that I purchased and what they do. And then hopefully by that time, I will have everything running and driving. I can give you some first impressions after the break-in of what a 411 gear set and an Eaton True Track feels like behind a T56 and a 454 big block Chevy. Thanks again for watching, guys. Um, Please like, subscribe. I read all your comments. I try to comment back. I appreciate them. I appreciate you guys. Stay safe. Have a good one.